Start off with a little bit of a funny thing. Putting asbestos around your computer isn't the same as installing a firewall. And besides your antivirus, you definitely need to have a firewall. Meltdown Inspector, a major vulnerability affecting almost every computer in the world. Since it affects almost every computer in the world, I suggest you ditch your computers and go out and get yourself an Apple Watch because it is the one thing that is not affected by this vulnerability. This is broken down into two parts. First one is Meltdown. And the bug basically melts down the security boundaries which are normally enforced by the hardware. Meltdown is mainly found on Intel processors. The second part is called Spectre. And the best way to describe this is if you have ever done a search online, you realize you only need to type the first couple of letters and it somehow seems to know exactly what you're looking for. Your processor works the same way. Once you give it a clue as to what it should be doing, it just takes off and that speeds up the entire process. Spectre affects Intel, AMD, and ARM processors. Since there is no hardware solution to this problem, the only fix is through software. And anytime you update hardware with software, you tend to slow down that operating system. Intel also announced that version 2 of Spectre, if you have a chip manufactured between 2007 and 2011, there is no fix, hardware or software. The only way for you to stay safe if you have one of these older computers, go out and buy a new one. Intel does say that its latest ninth generation Intel CPU is immune against Meltdown and Spectre. Now, if they'd only send us the money to go along with this, we'd all be happy to get the ninth generation computer. A vulnerability that affects all Windows computers, it's called SMB1. It's used to allow sharing of files across our systems. In order to correct this vulnerability, go to Control Panel, then go to Programs and Features. You'll see a box called Turn Windows Features On or Off. Click that. This will open up the second window. Scroll down until you get to the SMB1 and uncheck it. Unchecked, you're safe. If it's checked, you are not. So make sure this box gets unchecked. Then hit the OK and reboot your system. One more bit of bad news, WPA2, which is used to encrypt anything and everything connected to Wi-Fi, turns out it has never been safe. It didn't mean anything until October of last year, but back then somebody figured out how to use that vulnerability against us. The only way to fix this is to update all devices that use Wi-Fi. That means your computer, your smartphones, your routers, and any smart devices you have that use Wi-Fi. Everything needs to be up to date. If it's not, you are vulnerable. Our smart devices are now starting to go a bit too far. My stove is now asking me to speak into my salt shaker. And virtually everything wants to become a smart device. This pirate's hook is equipped with navigation features. And what this simply points out is that if it's connected, it needs to be protected. Can you find all the possible hackable devices? The smart TV, the router, the gaming console, smoke detector, security system, stereo system, laptop, and mobile device. More than you thought, right? You can protect your Wi-Fi network with Avast, even if you're using the free version. Most of us don't realize just exactly how many smart devices we currently already use. Statistically, we use at least three smart devices a person. What we want to prevent is the internet of ransomware of things. 
The last thing you want is to have your front door infected by ransomware and you now have to pay somebody to get in and out of your house. Not a good thing to happen. And as you can see from this little cartoon, almost everything in your home sooner or later will become a smart device. The good news is that after all of my preaching over all these years, older Americans are now finally embracing technology. It certainly has taken a long time. The bad news is that 30 is now considered older. I guess it makes some of us dinosaurs. Brand new cars already come equipped with navigation features built in. I still depend on my Garmin to get me from one place to the next. But whether it's a Garmin or a built-in feature, they all work the same way. Once they know where home is, they can get you to wherever you want to go and can always get you back home from wherever you happen to be. The wrong thing, however, is to make home your actual home address. For me, home is the substation of the police station nearest my home. That way, if my car is stolen, I will already have called the police, given them the plate number and the description, and when that crook thinks he's at my house breaking in, he'll be at the police station, hopefully breaking into jail. It's time for us to start paying attention to our cars. We're treating our cars like we used to treat our smartphones. We didn't wipe them, we didn't clean them, we just threw them away. You don't seem to realize that you now sync your smart devices with your car. And your car has as much information as your smartphone. If that gets in the wrong hands, they'll know where you live. They'll know the distance from where your car currently is to your house. So pay attention to your cars. The last time I rented a car, I wanted to pair my phone with it, but it turns out there were already six phones paired with that car. If I was the wrong person, that would have been six address books that I would have harvested and make six families very unhappy. It's perfectly okay to share your phone or pair your phone with the rental car, provided you delete that phone before you turn it back in. That same bit of advice also follows when you sell your car. If your phone's been paired with it, delete it before you turn it over to the new owner. Don't give away your information. I own both of these smart devices, Google Home and Amazon Echo, and I've often been asked, how do you make sure that these devices are 100% safe? I only know of one sure way. After you purchase it, take it out of its box, then put it up on the shelf and don't connect it and don't plug it in. You now have a perfectly safe device. You also have a perfect, perfectly useless device. There is no way to make them 100% safe. They communicate through Wi-Fi. They're constantly connected. They constantly listen and record. They're listening for the magic word that springs them into action to do all the, your bidding. But in order to do that, they have to constantly listen. And the danger appears when someone else gets into your home network. That stranger or crook who's gotten into your home network will now be privy to all the stuff that these devices are recording. That's where the danger comes in. Which of the two devices is better? I'll let you be the judge. Hey, Google, tell me a joke. This might make you laugh. I once stayed up all night trying to figure out where the sun went. Then it dawned on me. Alexa, tell me a joke. When is a door not a door? When it's a jar. The only promise I can make is that all jokes that they tell are 100% clean. Maybe that's why they're not as funny. 
Avast is ready to protect things in the Internet of Things. Avast uses artificial intelligent driven behavior analysis of all data entering and leaving your home, making sure that what comes into your house is safe and likewise making sure that whatever leaves your home is supposed to actually leave your home is one way of protecting everything within your home. In this age of the Internet of Things, more and more devices connect via your Wi-Fi network. Knowing that all of these devices are connected securely becomes increasingly important. The Wi-Fi inspector, which is a part of all versions of Avast Antivirus, is one of the integral parts of Avast Antivirus that help you in determining if your Wi-Fi is truly safe and secure. The Wi-Fi Inspector automatically scans all devices connected to your home network via wireless or cable connection. If it finds a problem, it lets you know what the problem is and in most instances gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to fix that vulnerability it may have discovered. Remember, your router is the front door to your system, making sure it's secure and anything connected via that router is securely connected is extremely important. Stay A program that I've installed on all my laptops and the same app that's also installed on all my smart devices is called Prey. Pray make sure that if you lose your device or laptop or it is stolen, that you have a way of recovering that device or laptop. This is one of those tools that needs to be installed before you actually need it. Because if it hasn't been installed before you need it, once you do, it is too late. When I went to Florida the last time, I went down there with two laptops and I returned home with one. But because Prey was installed on that laptop, I knew exactly where the device was last used. I also knew that no one else had attempted to get to that device. I was able to contact the airport and had the device returned to me. Prey, again, as I said, needs to be installed before you actually need it. In my case, I got my laptop back. Now, Installing this before you need it is just as important as on a regular basis doing an image backup of your computer. Again, this is something that needs to be done before you actually have to revert to that image that was created. If you don't do it before you need it, it is too late after you do need it. If your computer is infected where you can't recoup it, or you have a hardware failure and now can't get to that device, that image backup within an hour can re restore your entire system. But if you haven't made one, it is too late at the time that you now need it. Get in the habit and on a regular basis, create an image backup. If you then wind up having a problem, you can always restore it. Without it, you will lose all of your personal information. You can always restore the operating system and the programs, but your personal information is what's at risk. Our garage door opener used to have a simple function. We press the button, it opens the garage door, that's it. Now we have smart garage door openers. When you push that button, it not only opens your garage door, but it also deactivates your home alarm, which is great if you are the one doing that pushing of the button. Not so good if a, a thief has stolen your car, they now get to your house, press that garage door opener, and they not only get into the garage, but they deactivate the home alarm. By the time you get home, they already stole your car, they've now emptied your garage, and they probably will have done the same to your home. Treat smart devices with a little bit more respect than you do the dumb ones. They're a great time saver, provided you control it. They can be a great expense if somebody else gets a hold of them. 
Facebook was recently hacked. This is one of the tools that you can use to make sure your account wasn't one of them. Has your Facebook page been hacked? There's an easy way to tell. Log into your Facebook account. Once there, go to your settings. Next, go to security and login. Once that's opened, take a look at where you're logged in. Now you want to see more detail because you want to check more than just the last two places from where you've logged in. Take a look at all of these. If they're familiar, nothing strange, then you're safe. If you see all kinds of addresses from where you've logged in, you don't recognize them, then someone else is probably signing in on your Facebook page. And it's time for you to take some critical action. Looking through my log here, I see some things that I had to check out. I have one here that's in New York. But when I looked at my calendar, guess what? I was in New York doing some vast sponsored security seminars. So I was perfectly safe, even though I was away from home. That list gets quite extensive. So look through the entire thing. I actually do this on a regular basis since I do lots of travels, quite active on my Facebook account. And I use this as a way to make sure I'm the only one making entries on my home Facebook account. Within the last week, Facebook itself made a link available. Once you've signed into your Facebook account, that link will tell you whether or not your account was on that hacker's list and whether or not your Facebook is now somebody else's business. Open Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi that's totally free but not secure. We don't control its security. You'll find that at Starbucks, McDonald's, the public library, a hotel you may be staying at, and many, many other places. This little video will show you why open Wi-Fi is the wrong thing to use whenever you do something that should be secured. Excuse me, everyone on this Wi-Fi network, my bank login is SurferBro9000. My password is capital P, ampersand, dollar sign, dollar sign, W-O-R-D. And your mother's maiden name? How about the name of your first pet and the street you grew up on? Your favorite sleep position. Favorite call? When you connect to open or free Wi-Fi, your private information can be compromised. Be safe and secure online wherever you are with a vast secure line VPN. The VPN from Avast is not a free product. It is free to me since it's Avast's fault that I spend so much time away from home. But for anyone else, you would have to pay for that product. Happens to be an excellent VPN. What a VPN does is it encrypts all the information before it leaves your computer. It doesn't get unencrypted until just about the time that it gets to its destination. So if someone in the middle were to intercept that information, it would be totally useless to them since it's fully encrypted and they don't have a key to unlock it. For those of you that are looking for something that's free, it can be as simple as installing the Opera browser. Once you've installed that browser, go into your settings, then go down to privacy and security. You'll find something called VPN. The box is unchecked by default. Once you check the box, then the VPN logo up by the address bar will turn from red to blue. Blue means that everything you now do within that browser will be fully encrypted. Again, if someone intercepts the information, they don't have a key, they can't unlock it, so it's total garbage to them, keeping you totally safe. Remember, this only works while you're doing things within the browser. The VPN secure line from Avast is a system thing, so it actually protects everything you do on your system. There are other VPNs available. Do your own research. I can tell you personally, I've been very happy with the VPN that Avast makes available. Crypto mining. This is where someone uses your computing power in order to earn bitcoins. Avast treats crypto mining just like it would any infection. Crypto mining 
can draw your computing power, will slow your system down to a crawl, and it can actually cause overheating of your system. That's why Avast is now treating it just as it would a virus and will block it from ever happening on your system. There are some charities that would like for you to install crypto mining in order for them to earn some bitcoins. My recommendation is if that's what the uh, charity wants to do, send them a donation, but don't allow them to install this crypto mining on your system. These are some of the tools that you can use to block crypto mining. Some help for protecting your identity. If it's on paper, before you throw it in the garbage, put it through a shredder. There are people out there that harvest garbage in order to steal any personal information that they may find. Put it through a shredder and keep yourself safe. Documents at home should be kept in a safe. If you don't have a safe, get it into a safe deposit box at the bank. Don't leave it in a drawer at home because if somebody breaks into your house, they now own all your personal and important documents. Passwords. You should be using a different password for everything that requires a password. If you use the same password all over the place and someone steals it, they now have access to everything that uses that password. Don't volunteer more information than needed. Quite often we fill out a questionnaire and they always add extra questions. Just because most people, when their question is there, they're going to answer it. Only give them what is needed. Don't volunteer anything else. If the guy from Microsoft happens to call your house, hang up the phone. Number one, he's not from Microsoft. The only thing he wants is remote access to your computer so he can steal all the information that's on that computer. Don't be a fool. Microsoft has no clue whether your computer is safe or infected. And as I said, the person that's calling you isn't from Microsoft. Hang up the phone. By law, we are entitled once per year to a free credit report from each of the three major credit reporting companies. But what you should do is to stagger your request for those reports. In January, get your report from Equifax. In May, get it from Experian. And then in September, ask for it from TransUnion. That way, once every four months, you'll have a fresh credit report. And if something's going on, you will know about it. If you ask for the same report in January, you'll have three reports all containing just about the same information, and then you'll have to wait an entire year before you can get a new free credit report. So stagger your requests. If you've had your identity stolen, contact the folks at idtheftcenter.org. It's a nonprofit. They don't charge for their services. If you're looking for ID theft protection, I suggest you contact your homeowner's insurance. They sell that kind of protection, and it'll be a lot cheaper than what you will get from one of those things that advertise all the time to help protect you against identity theft. As most of you know, Equifax was just hacked and what was stolen was almost half of the country's personal information. They gave away names, addresses, birth dates, social security numbers, and in some cases, even driver's license information. This was the largest breach in US history. It probably will not be the last time that something like this will happen. If you happen to be one of the people who's had their information stolen, you are now candidates for identity theft. And to protect yourself against identity theft, the best thing you can do is to freeze your credit. Freezing your credit means that no new loans, credit cards, mortgages can be made in your name. If you place the freeze on your account, you of course can reverse that freeze. But once the freeze is in place, no one 
even the person who may have stolen your identity can make any loans in your name. And the main reason for stealing someone's identity is exactly that. Make loans in their name, get credit cards in their name. They get billed and the thief winds up with the benefits. Here you have the phone numbers and the websites of the three major credit reporting companies. You'd have to contact all three of them and put a freeze on your credit to prevent anyone else, including yourself, from making new loans. When you place a freeze on your credit, you'll have to make up a PIN number, and it's that PIN number that you'll be using when it comes time to unfreeze your credit. Therefore, remember that PIN number. If you don't know it, you won't be able to unfreeze your credit. Now, freezing doesn't mean you can't use what you currently have. So your credit card, the mortgages that you have, all of that stuff, they stay just as they are right now. You just can't extend anything or make anything new. Some updates on this. The PIN number is assigned by them. You don't get to make up your own. If you call to reverse your, your freeze and you don't have the PIN number, they will assume it's a crook calling trying to get to that information. And you will be asked 100,000 questions to make sure you are actually the lawful owner of that information. With the PIN number, it's very easy. Without it, be prepared to be given a third degree. This is the antivirus program. Uh, let's go. I'm sorry about that. We're next going to cover some programs that I use besides just my antivirus. It is called layered protection using more than one product to make my system nice and protected. Since I'm one of those people that likes free products, all of the things I'll be talking about are free products. First program I install on any new computer or any computer that I work on is called Unchecky. Unchecky works in the background. If you've ever installed a program and then got surprised afterwards because that program which you knew was a good program, now all of a sudden added all kinds of garbage to your system. That's because you used the default install. Unchecky works in the background. So that surprises of bad things being added don't happen even when you use the default install. I personally never ever use default. I always use a custom install. That way I get to see what's being installed, where it's being installed, and best of all I get to uncheck all those things that I do not want installed. Unchecky does that for you automatically in the background. McShield, used to protect you against uh, boot sector infections on flash drives, memory cards from a camera, external hard drives. You need to realize that your antivirus program by default does not check every part of that external device. By default, it is set to check anything you open on that device. So I use McShield to check the boot sector, and then my antivirus automatically checks anything I open on those devices. Again, layered protection. CCleaner was originally called Crap Cleaner because that's its job. Clean up all the garbage left behind when you visit the internet or use any of the programs on your computer. For the average user, Please leave the default settings exactly the way they are. They're always 100% safe and allow it to do its job, clean up garbage. You can also use CCleaner to do many other utilities on your computer. One of, when, one of them is to clean the registry, but unless you're an expert, don't do it. I personally never clean the registry. The amount of time that they tell you it will save are measured in millions of a second. And for me, it's not important to save five or 10 millions of a second by doing something that could result in my system not restarting. Use the tool for what it was originally intended, and that's to clean up garbage. 
Malware Bytes and a Malware, an excellent companion, regardless of whose antivirus program you happen to be using. It works together with your antivirus program. You can only install one resident antivirus program at a time, but you can have Malware Bytes and your antivirus. They work together. This is the antivirus program I've used since 2003, the free version of Avast. Back in 2003, I was using Norton. Actually, Norton was using my system and on occasion gave me access. That's when I did some research, stumbled on Avast. It's light on system resources, has done an excellent job of keeping my systems safe. This is available for both Windows and Mac, and if you decide to install it on your computer, this is what you can expect. The internet never sleeps. Morning, noon, and night, millions of people are working, playing, and connecting online. While the internet grows, serious cyber threats are growing along with it. Avast makes the world's most popular internet security software. And we've built the largest global cybersecurity network to keep you protected, no matter the place, whatever the time of day. We analyze data from our 400 million users and use next generation detection algorithms based on artificial intelligence and machine learning to detect and block threats in real time, anticipating and stopping attacks before they do damage. Every month, Avast prevents over a billion malware attacks around the world, all without ever slowing you down. Whatever you do, wherever you connect, morning, noon, or night, Avast keeps you protected online. Avast has over 400 million users worldwide. Avast is the most used antivirus program worldwide. I had told you earlier that passwords are important and you should be using a different password for everything that requires that password. These are the 10 most used passwords worldwide. And as you can see, there isn't a single one of them here that's worth anything, even if one of them is password. It is also not safe to write down your password on a sticky note and attach it to your refrigerator. Especially now when we have smart refrigerators, you have no way of knowing where that password will wind up. I also realize it's impossible to memorize all those passwords that we have to have. What you should be doing is using a password manager. A password manager can generate strong passwords for you, can import your passwords for you, it can synchronize the passwords across all your devices. If you're using Avast, you already have a password. It's a part of the product. All you have to do is to start using it. The only password when you start using a password manager, the only password you need to remember is one password, and that's a strong password to get into your password manager it will take care of all the other passwords. And there's no reason to continue to use that same password for all accounts because your password manager has an unlimited amount of passwords that it will remember for you. Remember one strong password because you need it to get into the password manager. You also need to realize it is not stored anywhere. You can't ask Avast or anyone else to give you a hint what it is. If you lose that password, you get to start all over again. Write that password down until it gets embedded in your brain and then get rid of that piece of paper. This is one way to use a different password for everything that requires a password and still only need to remember one password. This is available for Windows, for Mac, for iOS devices, and for Android devices, and you can sync it across all your devices. For those of us that use a mobile device, 
by now we probably have more personal information on that mobile device than we have on our computers. They need to be protected just the same as our computers. If you have an iOS device, you depend on Apple to keep you safe. There is no third party antivirus for an iOS device. If there's a problem of any kind, you get a patch from Apple and that's how you're kept safe. For those that own an Android device, Avast offers totally free mobile security and this is what it can do for you. Please listen carefully. How to protect your phone and tablet. With so much valuable data inside, our phones are magnets for all kinds of hostile software. Each day, Avast detects 12,000 mobile malware samples. And you are vulnerable when you least suspect it, like when you're playing games. So if you don't want to be spied on and want to keep your data safe, try Avast Mobile Security for free. We already have 2 million malware samples locked up in our mobile database. That's because we run a powerful virus scan to stop hackers in their tracks. An antivirus engine automatically looks for infected apps, trojans, and memory card content. It even tests new apps to make sure they're safe before you use them. And Wi-Fi security always keeps your connection safe no matter where you connect. Letting you know if the network you're connected to is unsecure, weakly encrypted or otherwise unsafe. You can even lock your apps to keep your app content safe from children, thieves and cheeky friends. Filter incoming calls and texts, block specific numbers from calling or messaging you, and avoid any awkwardness. It's easy to use complete protection for your phone and your tablet. The cost? What cost? It's totally free. Download a vast free mobile security directly from Google Play. I couldn't have said that better myself. When you run into an internet access problem or a problem with your computer and you just simply can't figure out what's causing it, here's a recommendation for a simple fix. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> Many people think that that's a joke and it really is not. Quite often things build up in the background and no matter what you try, you just can't solve that problem. Sometimes you need to totally disconnect that device from electricity. And that's your computer, your router, anyone where you have a problem and you can't solve it, before you send it into the shop, totally disconnect it from electricity. If it's a laptop, you need to take out the battery and then you have to wait a minute or two. All these devices have capacitors and until the capacitor has fully discharged, you haven't really disconnected from electricity. Once that's done, plug it back in and most of the time, that problem that you haven't been able to solve is now history. It is certainly worth five minutes of your time to try this before sending it into the shop. Because if you don't, expect to call within 15 minutes to let you know your device has been fixed. Come on down, pick it up, $179.95. And you could have done it all by yourself. So those are the kind of repairs that I would love to do all day long. Many of you, they already have gotten the new Medicare card. 
We all will eventually. And the new Medicare card does not have our social security number on it. Uncle Sam has finally realized it isn't safe to have the social security number on the Medicare card. It's sure taken quite some time. We've now come to a fork in the road. Please don't sit on this one, it may hurt. It took me quite some time, but I finally figured out what that spoiler in the back of the car is actually meant to be used for. Just don't have your lunch back there while the person's doing 80 miles an hour. That's not safe. If you've been on the internet long enough, sooner or later, you would have run into the 404 page not found error. It's embarrassing when that happens on the internet because it usually happens on a website we really want to visit. It is terrible when this happens at home. The older we get, the fewer things seem worth waiting in line for. And that's because if we wait long enough, we'll probably forget what we were in line for in the first place. It's known as a senior moment. I've often asked my doctor, do I really need to take this medicine for the rest of my life? And I've always gotten the same answer. Yes, I'm afraid so. I want to know then how serious is my condition? The prescription is marked no refills. So far, I've been lucky. It's always been the doctor's mistake. I also know one of these days that won't be the case. Now I know why they call this, I see you. That brings us to the end of the important part of this presentation. If you learned something today, please let Dawn at Avast know about this. I don't work for Avast. I've used their product since 2003. I've been part of their customer support forum, which is a voluntary thing, since 2004. And this is actually an extension of that support form. My arrangement with Avast is simple. From the time I leave home till I get back, they pay every dime of my expenses. So today, since I'm sitting at my kitchen table, they're getting a real bargain because there aren't any expenses. If you know of any clubs that would like a presentation, please have them contact me and I'd be happy to arrange one. Remember, there is never a charge to the club or its members for my services. That's where Avast comes in. 